Hello and welcome to another episode of Thoughts Per Episode, House of the Dragon Edition. Today we are discussing episode 2, which is titled something. It's titled The Rogue Prince. Oh boy, that's a good title. Today's episode is very much focused on the succession of a Targaryen house after the death of Emma, uh, and people obviously not quite accepting Rhaenyra as heir because she's a lady, and the conflict within the series of duty versus you know, being a decent human person. Or I guess another way of saying that would be the choice between doing what he wants to do and doing what at least people seem to think the realm needs him to do. And the realm apparently wants him to marry a 12 year old. And it's gross, like the scene where he's literally walking and talking to this kid about potentially marrying them, it's absolutely disgusting, but obviously also historically accurate based on what it's actually based on. But the episode does go out of its way to show us what a strong political marriage that would actually be in terms of, you know, the the power of the two houses, how they both come from old Valyria, so that would make them even more royal, um, you know, all the, all the bells and whistles attached. I think the most gag-worthy moment is when she says to him, my, my mother told me I wouldn't have to bed you until I was 14 and she's revealed to be 12, and everyone's like, oh, she'll mature, don't worry about it. Viserys doesn't choose what well, I guess in that case would be duty, though. He chooses uh, love, because I think he definitely feels something for Alison Hightower. I think that's the reason why he went for her. However, I think that is a love that was very carefully manufactured by Otto and Alison, and I think... I think last episode I said I liked Otto Hightower. I just wanna, <laughs> just wanna clarify. I like him the same way I like Tywin Lannister. He's an interesting villain. Uh, he's interesting to watch on screen. But as a person, I did mention this last episode. I don't like anyone in these shows as a person. But he's a scheming, gross fucking man. I look forward to seeing him get stabbed someday because it's inevitable. People get stabbed in Thrones. I thought he might have got stabbed this episode. I don't know why Viserys thought it would be wise to send Otto Hightower to go and treat with uh, Daemon Targaryen. He knows how much they hate each other. Um, I guess maybe it was a sign of his anger that he decided to let Otto Hightower go instead. But thank god Rhaenyra went along, eh? I think that was obviously the uh, standout highlight of the episode, that particular tense showdown. And if anything, it shows us what this show has continued to show us this entire time, which is how capable Rhaenyra is. You know, in stark contrast to the way that she's treated. She's still the bloody cupbearer, even though she's the heir. It's ridiculous. But if she hadn't shown up, there would probably have been blood or fire. Or both. I mean, it's based on fire and blood. Kind of a dead giveaway. But man, when I saw those two dragons sizing each other up across the, across the bridge of men, I was like, oh jeez. Oh jeez. You know, this is it, isn't it? This is the start of all of that. I like how it's revealed that everything Damon said was a lie as well. He's not even marrying... Um, that lady who I don't remember the name of currently. He, she's not even pregnant. He's literally just trying to take a jab at Viserys and wind him up. If they actually arrived for the wedding, like, he would have been screwed because there would have been no wedding. He knew that Viserys wasn't going to that wedding. No way in hell. It is interesting how Rhaenyra and Daemon were shown to have a good relationship in the first episode, but now Rhaenyra is obviously openly uh, opposed to Damon being like, you are in my castle, that kind of thing. I do like that because there's this undercurrent of, come on man, I know you, we used to be cool and now you're being a dick. I also really like how they gave Miss Saria, that's the name of Damon's lover, um, I really like how they gave her a scene to be angry at Damon and to tell him that, you know, she came with him to be free from fear and that he's placing her in danger by doing all of this stuff. I like that she's more than just like, you know, being used for the plot and then we don't see her reaction to any of this. It's a reminder that, hey, she's a character with feelings and motivations too. It also reinforces what a piece of shit Damon is. One small feature I like about this episode as well is that we get to see how Viserys' uh, finger wound that he got in the previous episode has festered over the last six months. Obviously they're going to try and use maggots to treat it. Again, very historically accurate. <laughs> uh, but it's another sign of like, you know, the Iron Throne is literally slowly killing this man, and I feel like we're probably going to see him slowly get more and more cuts and wounds from it as the series goes on. Again, I don't remember what happens. I don't remember if he's, like, a king who literally got killed by the Iron Throne or not. Um, I don't remember how his downfall inevitably comes, but it'll be interesting to see. Anyway, I'm not going to drag out this video too long. Like I did say in the previous video, these House of the Dragon episodes are going to be 
quite short unless it's like a major big deal that I've got tons to talk about. Um, but I had quite a busy day today as well, so I'm not really not really settling down for a full-on analysis of this video. There's other people who can go and do that. But I just wanted to give a quick update of uh, my thoughts on the episode. That's why we're here. Let me know what you thought in the comments if you like. Um, but yeah, I'm really bloody enjoying this so far, still. And it's nice because I'm starting to see people on Twitter who were like, Oh great, they're doing a prequel Game of Thrones show. It's probably going to be shit because the end of Game of Thrones was shit. It's kind of vindicating to see them coming around and going, Oh... Actually, you know what? This is pretty good. Obviously, I didn't know it would be pretty good. It could have still been shit, but I was optimistic about it as I was reading about the show's development. So, uh, but yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to be like, oh, I told you so. <laughs> it's just nice that an optimistic take was the <laughs> right one for once. Although, again, we are still on episode two, so plenty of time for it to go awry. I don't know how much of the story they are adapting purely in season one. Uh, so I am slightly concerned for like, the longevity of this show like if they do this main story arc in one season uh what are they going to do for the next few seasons or is this going to be like a one season show i doubt it because we all know hbo likes money um <laughs> too much but that's something to worry about at the end of a season if we do get through too much story but anyway thank you very much for watching i'll see you in the next